Live from Yankee Stadium and the WNDU Studios, this is New Center 16's Countdown to Kickoff. You are looking live at the big ballpark in the Bronx, 161st Street and River Avenue, where today Yankee Stadium plays host to the highest ranked college football matchup in New York City since 1947. Number 12, Syracuse, and number three, Notre Dame. Brian Kelly and his third ranked Irish arrived at the stadium a little over an hour ago. Their second to last stop on their path to perfection and a possible trip to the college football playoff and they've been welcomed by a boisterous bunch. Thousands of Irish fans decked out in blue, gold, and green in the place where Notre Dame's love affair with millions of Subway alumni began nearly a century ago, New York City. Good afternoon and welcome to New Center 16's Countdown to Kickoff. I'm WHME Sports Director Chuck Freeby. And we bring in the Countdown's Alex Wilcox, who has ended his magical mystery tour and finally <laughs> arrived at Yankee Stadium. Alex, good to see you in the right city. Chuck, it's good to be here after these past 36 hours or so. Me and uh, my chief photog, Don Schoenfeld, who has made this trip with me. We weren't sure we were going to be here in time for kickoff. We weren't sure we were going to be here in time to do this show. But here we are. Our excellent adventure began with a canceled connecting flight from Charlotte to New York City Thursday night. Then with no New York flights left, we headed to the closest place, which was apparently Washington Dulles Airport. From there, we Ubered into D.C., then took an Amtrak train here to the Big Apple, arriving around 11 p.m. last night. But enough about us, and on to the biggest story for these 10-0 Irish, their starting quarterback. Ian Book is back today after missing the game against Florida State while nursing the sore rib he hurt in the Northwestern game. Book's teammates and Brian Kelly say number 12 looked like his normal self this week in practice. I think he, uh, he's had a good week. You know, I think normal rust maybe on Tuesday, but Wednesday ran the offense effectively. And then today, I think just settled in as if he had not had a week off. So I think today was a really good day. And, you know, he's going to get hit. And, uh, but we, we feel very comfortable. We wouldn't have played him if we had to put him in bubble wrap. You know, you just can't play a quarterback under those conditions. And look, we've seen it. When Book is on the field, the Irish have done well, and Book has done well. The best part about Book's game is his accuracy. He's actually the most accurate passer in Division I FBS football, completing an absurd 74.5% of his passes. And Chuck, I'll give you one more stat. Notre Dame has never lost a game that Ian Book has started. They are a perfect 7-0, 6-0 this season, and of course, one win from a year ago. Alex, coming into this season, the only numbers that stood out to Irish fans in November were the dismal records that Kelly's crew recorded in the 11th month. From 2013 through 2017, the Irish were just 9-12 and 12 in November, earning the reputation as a team that fades down the stretch. But so far this month, they're 2-0, and, oh, and now the question is, will they get to 4-0? and oh? Put that fading reputation behind them and make this a November to remember. When you talk to the Irish, their secret seems to be staying in the moment and not tackling the whole month at once. We really try not to look that far into the future, um, but hey look, if we get two more wins, we're there. So we're really just trying to get this dub against Syracuse and then, you know, the next week against USC. Those are the words of a guy who's been there and seen that. This is Nick Coleman's fourth November at Notre Dame. He knows the history and he's learned just how special every win is in this decisive month. Now let's head back to New York. And Alex, I know history is on your mind too. It's Notre Dame's long connection with Yankee Stadium. That's right, Chuck. And the history in this place only goes back till 2010. But of course, the, this building was only built in 2009. And already the Irish have played here three times, or I should say this will be the third time. In the old place across the street, though, they've played there 24 times. Newt Rockney gave his win one for the Gipper speech there against Army in 1928. His Irish then came back from a halftime deficit and rallied to win 12 to 6. After that, 18 years later, Yankee Stadium hosted one of college football's most memorable games of the 20th century, the famous scoreless tie in 1946 between Notre Dame and Army. The Irish have already played Syracuse here, losing to the Orange Men 14 to 7 the week after President Kennedy was assassinated in 1963. 
Notre Dame's somewhat regular visits to the Bronx then took a long hiatus after the Irish blasted Army 45 zip here in 1969. The Irish didn't return until the Shamrock Series win over the Black Knights in this stadium in 2010. That was followed by the Pinstripe Bowl win over Rutgers in 2013. It's been a special venue for the Irish, and the players know it. Uh, I'm really excited. I think it's going to be pretty cool. It's a great venue. I mean, I've never been to New York, so but I'm excited about it because you know it's historic. Like this history in Yankee Stadium is awesome. The Irish are also mixing up their look with the Yankees for their Shamrock Series uniforms today. They're wearing pinstripe pants and blue jerseys with a Yankees-style script Notre Dame on the front. The Irish will also don blue helmets with a special logo. Now, this is the first time the Irish haven't worn gold helmets since the leather helmet days. Chuck, I'm pretty sure uh, you remember those days, but it's also like kind of a little bit like the Yankees not wearing their pinstripes. It just feels a little wrong. It, well, because it is. Alex, they won't be the only ones in a questionable getup. The team built on this motto, orange is the new fast, is wearing all white. But Syracuse is definitely living up to the fast part of that bargain. They've got a dynamic offense led by quarterback Eric Dungy. He's a threat on the ground and through the air. They also have playmakers like Mo Neal in the backfield and Sean Riley downfield. Riley is also a big part of their stellar special teams as a return man. So is kicker Andre Schmidt, who's made 27 of 29 field goal attempts in all 51 of his PATs. Now the question for a team that lost to Notre Dame two years ago is, can they handle this big moment? We played on TV before. The stage is no different than playing in Clemson Stadium or playing in some of the other stadiums we've played in. I think the teams are different and I think the stage is different. And we're going to have to see if we've matured enough to handle the situation. Of course, Irish fans are dreaming of a much bigger stage than today, and that brings us to the Lock Monday Auto Group Irish fan poll on WNDU.com. We're asking you, will Notre Dame make the college football playoff? And right now, most of you, 72% feel very good and say yes, only 28% say no. And there is still time to vote in the Lock Monday Auto Group Irish fan poll on WNDU.com. We'll bring you the final results in about 20 minutes. So with two games left for the Irish, we see there is a lot at stake. Let's head to the countdown's Mark Skoll Jr. for a closer look. Thank you, Chuck. All that's on the line is a chance to play in the college football playoff and to be undefeated in the regular season for the first time since 2012. But the Irish approach hasn't changed one bit. The goal remains the same. Here come the undefeated Irish. Notre Dame is just two wins away from clinching a berth in the college football playoff. But the players say that's not a surprise. I think we've believed it's been tangible since we started in January. I mean, we had a great season last season. We knew the guy was coming back, had one goal in mind. No, I have not. There was never any doubt that we would be where we're at. The Irish say they haven't had any doubts because they followed Brian Kelly's process since day one. We, we trust the process, you know. It's not easy waking up every single day and, and going to class and going to meetings for hours and, and going to practice and occasionally lifting in the morning. It's not easy, but it, it's the process we go through and it's paid off so far. The process has led Notre Dame to an undefeated season so far. They improved to 10-0 and, and they're eight quarters away from making the college football playoff. But sitting at 10-0 and isn't satisfying yet. Ten wins is, is a great accomplishment, but um, that's not all we want right now. And uh, like you said, we're just trying to get to 11-0 and then 12-0 you know, after that. And with a zero in the loss column this late in the season, the Irish know they have a huge target on their back. And pressure is a privilege, so uh, we just embrace it and uh, we stick to our process. And we hopefully, like when we stick to our process and we play the way that we're capable of playing, um, the outcome will take care of itself. So with an undefeated record, a chance at the playoff, and all the pressure in the world, all the Irish want to do is enjoy the ride. We're, we're blessed to be in this position that we're in, and I, I'm just really happy to be in this position that we're in. It doesn't come this often, so I'm just excited to be in it. And it certainly won't be easy for the Irish today against Syracuse. Notre Dame will look to avoid the upset against an Orange team that has played that role well the last couple of years. Well, they certainly have, making a lot of improvement. Thank you very much, Mark. There's still a lot more to come on this Shamrock Series edition of the Countdown. Up, up next, it's our Irish Illustrated report. Tim O'Malley joins me with a look at what the return of Ian Book means for the Irish and how Syracuse has turned its program around. 
and you can subscribe to Irish Illustrated, the number one source for Notre Dame sports online. Just head to irishillustrated.com and click on join to find the best plan for you. And here's your first Subway trivia question. What Heisman winner made a touchdown saving tackle to keep the 1946 Notre Dame Army game a scoreless tie? The answer when the countdown rolls back in two minutes. Here's today's Subway Eat Fresh trivia answer. 1947 Heisman winner Johnny Lujak made the touchdown saving tackle, preserving the scoreless tie against Army at Yankee Stadium in 1946. He took down 1945 Heisman winner Mr. Inside Doc Blanchard. Incredibly, two other Heisman winners also played in that game of the century. Blanchard's backfield mate Mr. Outside Glenn Davis, the 1946 winner, an Irish freshman and Leon Hart, who won in 1949. And we're back on the countdown here in the Bronx, joined by Tim O'Malley for our Irish Illustrated report. Tim, the big story today, Ian Book returning to the starting lineup for Notre Dame. Just how important is that for the Irish offense? I, mean, I, I think it makes a huge difference to have Book out there. It's He rolls out of bed and it's 30 points against most teams. It just He opens up the running game with his ability to hit those short passes. Uh, Syracuse will have a lot more trouble containing the dual threat that Book brings than the yeah. running element that Wimbush did. All right, so last week we asked you what happened to Florida State. This week we can really ask you the same question. What's happened to Syracuse? All of a sudden they're good. Yeah, I think Dino Babers in his third year. It's you know, he, he came in in 2016. This is a lot of the same players that you saw Notre Dame kind of beat up in the Meadowlands yeah. in 2016. He has his system in place now. It's a fast-paced tempo. He knows how to run it, and they run it. They are really good at running the football. That's where basically the crux of their offense comes from. Now they, they can throw it, but if they couldn't run it, they would not be anywhere near as effective as they are. You mentioned that fast-paced offense. Defensively, how does Clark Lee contain the Syracuse yeah, offense? I think there'll be some adjustments to be made because you could go out there in your base defense with three linebackers to contain their run, but then they're going to throw it on you. And the problem is they go so fast with success, you're stuck without your nickel out there. I think Brian Kelly has to make a choice at Clark Lee. Do we try and put an extra defensive back on the field to combat this fast pace? passing game or do we try to shut down their run and, and kind of absorb a few maybe some some small passes not the chunk passes but if you just tackle after short passes I think that might be the the feeling out process of the first half all right quickly uh what, what's your prediction you know I Syracuse had trouble scoring in the red zone they don't have any trouble scoring but they've had trouble getting touchdowns in the red zone so I think Notre Dame will hold them to field goals a lot of yards by both teams and I have Notre Dame in the 37 to 26 range today all right uh double digit win but uh, uh high scoring yeah yeah I think high scoring is the key it's nice enough weather here where they can yeah. they can both go up and down the field absolutely all right Tim O'Malley thanks so much for thanks. joining us as always and you can subscribe to Irish Illustrated the number one source for Notre Dame sports online just head to irishillustrated.com and click on join to find the best plan for you Alex, I remember four years ago, a lot of fans were juiced about a big tight end out of Vegas named Alizé Mack. He showed glimpses of greatness his freshman year, but he had virtually disappeared since. Now here in his senior season, Notre Dame is certainly enjoying the return of the Mack. Last Saturday, Alizé Mack's spirits may have been as high as his leaps. Two circus touchdowns with the absolute in the air, tremendous performance of Alizé Mack. But he remembers the lowest of the lows as well. My low point was suspension my sophomore year and then the bowl game is the bowl game. But after missing last year's Citrus Bowl win over LSU, Mack came back on a mission. He leads Irish tight ends with 30 catches, nearly matching the total from the previous three years of his career. When it all started to come together, I say January. Came back and told myself I was going to do things differently and grow up, be a man, and put my head down and just start working. The great thing about it for him is he stuck with it. Um, when, when there were low points, uh, when he could have walked away, he knew he shouldn't have, and he, and he hung in there, and um, all the credit goes to him. But Mac is quick to disperse the credit for his persistence to others. My parents, um, you know, it's kind of that opportunity to go home and kind of reset. Uh, and also my team, uh, my teammates, they helped me out through this process. And, uh, you know, they allowed me to be who I am today. And who is Alizé Mack today? 
a young man much closer to the player Irish fans expected four years ago. I think it's just being all around tight end, really. Um, and I know I had to do that coming in. So, I mean, if you want to have a future, you know, beyond this, this level, then you got to be an all around guy. And Mac looks certain to be one of those players at the next level. One NFL draft analyst projects Mac as a second or third round pick, but climbing, climbing almost as much as he did for those touchdown catches last Saturday. Next week, the countdown goes on the road again for the rivalry matchup with USC at the LA Coliseum. Join Alex, Mark, and me 7.30 next Saturday night here on WNDU. Now we're past the halfway point on this week's edition of the countdown. Up next, it's quick hits, including why Brian Kelly says Dexter Williams has turned himself around this season as he piles up the numbers. And a look at the Syracuse QB, who's padding the score sheet himself. And here's another Subway trivia question. Who was the last Syracuse quarterback to beat Notre Dame? Here's a hint. His last name is very familiar to Irish fans. The answer when the countdown returns from the band and the boogie down in the Bronx in two minutes. Here's today's Subway Eat Fresh trivia answer. Cameron Dantley was the last Syracuse quarterback to lead the Orange over the Irish when his struggling squad stunned Notre Dame Stadium with a 24-23 upset win in 2008. Dantley is the son of Irish basketball royalty. His dad, Adrian, was the 1976 College Player of the Year and is in the Basketball Hall of Fame and Notre Dame's Ring of Honor at Purcell Pavilion. Mark and I are back with quick hits on the countdown. We start with Notre Dame's bell cow back, Dexter Williams. And let's put this season in perspective. He is fifth in the nation in rushing yards per game, in the top 15 in yards per carry, in the top 30 in rushing touchdowns, despite missing the first four games of the season. When Williams ran for 202 last week against Florida State, he became the first player to run for that many yards against the Seminoles since 1982. Dexter has gone from a player that couldn't get on the field because of a four-game suspension to one who has vaulted into NFL draft talk. It is one of the great turnaround stories in all of college football this season. But how did it happen? We could list a number of them, but I would say um, just growing up and his maturity, um, ownership, and, and um, you know, being um, accountable and responsible. So the senior with the nickname Juice has provided it for the Irish offense, but who provides the juice for the orange? Back to Yankee Stadium for that answer with Alex. Chuck, that would be Syracuse senior quarterback Eric Dungy. Notre Dame actually played against this guy two years ago back in 2016. He had quite the day, per, uh, accounting for over 400 yards of total offense, and since then he's only gotten better. Dungy is a dual threat, one of just three active FBS quarterbacks with 8,000 career passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards. He's a master of the run-pass option, which is something the Irish are very aware of. This is a guy who can run and throw effectively. Um, uh, his RPOs, the way he, the way he handles the, the RPO is, is the best, you know, some of the, one of the best I've ever seen uh, college quarterbacks. Dungy already has 16 Syracuse school records to his name, which is pretty impressive considering past Syracuse quarterbacks include Don McPherson and Donovan McNabb. So not a bad list at all. So how do you defend Dungy and the Syracuse offense? For that, let's send things back to the studio with Mark Skull Jr. Mark. Alex, with Dungy under center, the Orange average just over 44 points per game. And Notre Dame hasn't seen an up-tempo offense like this since Wake Forest in September. The Irish handled the Demon Deacons fast pace well. Wake only threw for 139 yards. The key for the Irish to stopping an offense like this is to be active. Uh, just keeping everybody fresh. We rally a lot. We've always done it, but uh, I mean, it comes in pivotal, uh, especially against a team like this. They run that. They run the tempo very good. I mean, they're they're really really good at it, and so that's something we're really honing in on this week. I'm getting a little extra conditioning during practice, so that's something that uh, we've been doing a lot, just stopping big plays and getting on the quarterback's arm and stopping the run. Now it is our Four Winds Casino. What to watch for? Let's head back to the Bronx and Alex with his Irish key to the game, an X-Factor pick. 
Chuck, I think the key to this game is to establish the running game. The Irish ran for over 350 yards last week against Florida State. Dexter Williams had a career night rushing for over 200 yards. For the first time all season, it looked like the Irish offensive line finally came together, was really opening up holes. And I'll tell you what, if you want to stop this Syracuse offense and they're fast paced, a good way to do that is to keep them off the field with long drives that burn out the clock. Now my X factor, I'm going with the obvious one. Ian Book, he returns from this game back in the lineup for the first time since the Northwestern game when he suffered a rib injury. I want to know how healthy he really is. Is he playing well or is he playing cautious? That, I think, will determine the game. Let's send things back to Mark. Mark, what do you got? Alex, my key to the game for the Irish is score early and often. This is a Syracuse team that puts up over 40 points per game. They're going to have to get on the scoreboard early to keep up with them. My X factor is Miles Boykin. He's caught a touchdown in each of the last six games. I'm expecting that trend to continue with another touchdown today. You're from Chicago. You look at scoring like voting. Irish key to the game for me is the pass rush today. They've got to be able to get pressure on Dungey. I'll be curious to see if Clark Lee has to do a little bit of blitzing to do today to do that. And also to be able to stop the run that leads to the X Factor, who is Jerry Tillery. Not only has he been effective in getting to the quarterback this year and creating sacks, but he's also the man in the middle that can gum up the works for that Syracuse rushing game. We'll see if he can do that today. Now the final results of this week's Lock Monday Auto Group Irish Fan Poll on WNDU.com. We asked you, will Notre Dame make the college football playoff? And most of you, a resounding 72% say yes, only 28% say no. Thank you for voting in the Lock Monday Auto Group Irish Fan Poll on WNDU.com. Up next, it is our predictions for today's game when the countdown wraps up in two minutes. Back on the countdown, we continue our Four Winds Casino What to Watch For with Game Predictions. Mark? Chuck, I've got Notre Dame being undefeated again at the end of the day. I got them winning 35-24. Did you know that the Irish defense has held every opponent below its average so far this year? Syracuse averaging 44. They're only getting 28 today, and the Irish will get 38 and win this one by 10. Now let's head back to Alex for his prediction and wrap things up from Yankee Stadium. Chuck, I'm going to take things one further. You said it's going to be 28. I think the Irish defense does even better. I'm predicting a 10-point win for the Irish, 31-21 to over Syracuse. They improved to 11-0 after today. I will be back on the field for the postgame show after the game. Let's turn things over to NBC for their coverage of the Irish and the Orange.